exceptionally for uh, due to the crisis of uh, COVID-19, we have organized the UNIMED week uh, um, in Brussels that usually we organize in Brussels online. So this is the second week of webinars of online events. And uh, so we are uh, at the end of this long journey across different themes, topics, and, and uh, we really would like to thank all the participants uh, that joined the webinar the, during these uh, two, two weeks. The webinar of today, which is organized in collaboration with the Union for Mediterranean, is accent on the role of universities in the Nexus Employability Innovation, the benefits of a multi-stakeholder regional dialogue to meet the challenge of employability of young people, a key factor for economy recovery in the post-COVID Mediterranean. As I said, this, uh, uh, this seminar is organized by UNIMED, in particular by the UNIMED Subnetwork on Employability, in partnership with the Union for the Mediterranean. And I would like to thank Giuseppe Provenzano from UFM, Itaf Ben Abdallah, uh, and uh, um, really uh, Joao Labo that you will uh, hear uh, after after that, and all the other distinguished speakers that join us for uh, for this afternoon. The webinar will be a place for sharing experience and dialogue, points of view among academic leaders, socioeconomic actors, experts, and more broadly, regional stakeholders interested. By joining up the state of the art of the action already undertaken in this direction in the Euro Mediterranean region, try to identify their impact within university and to determine concrete follow up action to reinforce the regional cooperation in this field. We will have two round of tables uh, that will be organized on two uh, topics uh, and then we will uh, of course have a debate among the speakers and the participants. The first round table will be focused on regional cooperation with international stakeholders, the role of higher education research institution, and the second round table will be focused on experiences of dialogue between educational institution and industry sector. Uh, as all the other webinars of UNIMED Week, also this webinar is registered, is recorded, so you will have, uh, you will have access then to the link to, to listen again the recorded webinar, and you will receive all the material that will be published on our uh, UNIMED website. Uh, this is a modality, a webinar modality, so we, you will only see uh, the face of our speakers, but if you would like to intervene by submitting any questions or any, share any comments or feedback, you just have to raise your hand or write in the chat. And I encourage you also to introduce yourself in the chat so that we can know each other. Um, I think this is all by me from now. I leave the floor to our UNIMED director, Dr. Marcello Scalisi, for the introduction. Thank you. Grazie, Silvia. Thank you very much for your introduction and obviously for the work that you are doing in the framework of the subnetwork on employability and entrepreneurship, the UNIMED subnetwork. Uh, I have just a very brief comment, first of all, on uh, the UNIMED week that uh, we organized these two weeks. We had uh, lots of uh, webinars, and I have to say this is a new formula for all of us to manage uh, too many webinars in two weeks, two webinars more or less per day, is very tiring, as I have to say. Uh, of, of course, we are obliged to manage such situation looking at the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic situation, but in some way I think that this also was an opportunity to see that we can in any case manage our relationship among us using all these technological issues that help us to continue our daily job of international cooperation uh, for the benefit of our community. We did uh, very nice webinars discussing about several issues during these two weeks uh, in partnership with some of our institutional partners, uh, and some with our members or with the European Commission itself. And uh, it was uh, very nice to see that independently by the situation that we are facing, that is very unusual for all of us, that is touching our life, our 
our habits and our, also our economy environment. And in, also in some cases, unfortunately, our, also our uh, families. But uh, it's also nice to see that there is uh, still uh, an interest in maintaining our relationship. I saw in the participant list of today people that participate in most of our webinars. This show us the great interest to continue to debate, to discuss, to learn, to contribute, to participate. I think that the participation is the most important issue of, of our daily activity as network, first of all, looking at the needs of our members. For instance, yesterday we had a very nice and long, I have to say, webinar here yesterday morning discussing about cooperation with the Libyan universities. You know better than me that Libyan universities are in a country that is facing totally diverse problems <laughs> related to uh, the situation of the country itself, the war and so on. But the genuine interest for the university to be there, to participate, to join uh, international cooperation activity with other international members and so on, was for all of us uh, amazing. Just to say that independently by the pandemic, we have to continue our daily job and we have to continue to push our stakeholders, our international institutions and uh, to pay more attention to the needs of our Euro-Mediterranean academic community. In this sense, I have to say that Union for Mediterranean is uh, for us not only one of the most important players in, in the region, but is also a, a, a sort of good friend for us, because independent by the, the big size of this organization that is an inter intergovernmental association organization, uh, and UNIMED is a, a, a small independent organization of universities. It's nothing to compare with the role and the size of Uniform Mediterranean. But we are really working very, uh, not only in a very effective way, in a very nice way, but also in a very friendly way, which is, again, for an institution like UNIMED, to find this friendly environment in an intergovernmental organization <coughs> is surely quite unusual. And another point that for me is important is how to discuss with these institutions to achieve uh, concrete results. And I think that the topic that we are discussing today, today, today that is related to employability is an important priority for all of us uh, because this is a, a common issue for for instance for the european mediterranean countries that have the same problem of southern mediterranean countries in terms of unemployability or at least more or less the same problem but is the way to come to share ideas to to work together on a very concrete issues how to guarantee to our students the right competencies to be uh, to participate in the job market with the right competencies, with the right uh, power, with the right uh, opportunity, which is a challenge for for all of us. Obviously, universities they, they play an important role on that. First of all, educating people, but every year play an important role. In, uh, in giving to our students the right opportunities through the UNIMED sub network on employability and through other projects that we manage, like the Resume project and, and others, we are trying to transfer the right capacity to universities to be able to guarantee to their own students uh, the right opportunity to find their place in the job market and to find their place in, in life, which is with the right job is the most important issue. Again, I thank you very much the Union for Mediterranean and obviously all the panelists of today because it, the only way to at least to try to give our contribution is to join forces. Several times I proposed why not to, to define every two years a report on employability issues in the southern Mediterranean countries, where we were and where we are, 
after every two years to see the, uh, how it's moving the university system relating to that. And I hope that with the work that is doing the coordinator of the Union Subnetwork on Employability and other colleagues that are here around the table, we will be able soon to launch this jointly with Union for Mediterranean to launch this initiative. We have to measure our uh, efforts and we have to analyze if our efforts are going in the right direction. We don't have too much time. Now the COVID-19 is uh, creating another obstacles, but at the same time, uh, we know that in every crisis, there are also opportunities. Uh, our role is to, to, to find a way to define these opportunities and to offer to our academic communities and to our students the right, uh, the right path to move on and to pass this very critical situation. Thank you very much for your attention. I stop here, but I will be obviously with you for all the webinar. See you then. Can I, uh, Silvia, or we move directly to Joao? Yeah, we, I was thinking, yeah, that Joao, you can, you can start. Can yes, no please, please, the floor Joao. is yours. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Marcello. Yes, we are very happy to uh, collaborate with, uh, with Unimed on this uh, topic of employability of young people. Um, which is a, a priority uh, nowadays, uh, especially in this context of the COVID uh, pandemic. So um, there will be these two round tables. And um, the first one uh, is about a regional cooperation with international stakeholders and on the role of uh, higher education and research uh, institutions. Um, I would like so to welcome our uh, panelists, our five uh, panelists, um, before um, giving them the floor. Uh, the idea is for each one to um, present a specific topic I will introduce with an opening question. And then I hope we will have like 15 minutes for a debate. Uh, and then you can, uh, as Sylvia said, write your questions in the chat. So welcome, so Giuseppe uh, Provenzano, um, a colleague of mine, uh, who is expert at the Higher Education Research Division of the Secretariat of the Union for the Mediterranean. Welcome Raniero, Raniero Kelly, Senior Project Manager of, at UNIMED. Welcome Professor Selim, Selim uh, Mekdesi, uh, who is uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business at the Lebanese University and also coordinator of the UNIMED subnetwork on employability. Uh, welcome Aravella um, Zakariu, representative uh, from the Ministry of Education and Culture of Cyprus. And uh, you are the chair of the steering committee on education for sustainable development of UNECE. And um, finally, welcome Yasmin, Yasmin Segirat, uh, who is a policy and communications manager uh, of SIAM, the International Center for Advanced Mediterranean Agronomic Studies. So I um, give the floor to my colleague Giuseppe with, with, with a no question. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, as far as regional consultation mechanisms and platforms on the employability of uh, young people in the region um, are concerned, so what are the added value, the added value of these uh, mechanisms uh, of consultation, and also what are the limits? Giuseppe, you can you take the floor. Thank you, Joao, and of course, uh, thank you to our uh, co-organizer, uh, to, to the organizer in uh, UNIMED for, uh, first of all, for giving us this opportunity for, uh, for working together. And uh, it's not very, uh, not very easy to be the first speaker when there is such a rich uh, list uh, of, of participants and uh, attendees uh, with such a uh, 
a high level of experience, um, so we try not to, to steal too much time. Uh, going uh, to the topic of uh, what is the added value of uh, cooperation and, and dialogue in, uh, in, in employability on innovation, I think that without uh, giving a history of cooperation in the Mediterranean, uh, what we have learned in the, just in the last uh, couple of months, it's evident to, to everybody in, in, in this crisis that I think there are two pillars that are um, becoming self-evident, not just uh, to us who, who are people who are working in the field, but to the general public, to everybody, which is there is uh, um, a greater need to do more things together and especially in a couple of topics which now are becoming more and more connected to our collective security. First of all, there is uh, the need for doing more together for research. Why? Because uh, we have seen that we know that research is a collaborative ex uh, effort by its own definition. So the more we cooperate together for education and for research, uh, the easier it is to, uh, to have bigger results. And when we have a, a joint uh, huge challenge, such as the, the one we showed by the COVID-19, we have discovered immediately that cooperating together for finding a cure, for finding a vaccine, is immediately our collective together. This has been since the first uh, for a cure for a vaccine. Uh, and we have seen also in our Mediterranean context. Uh, so already uh, three months ago, we met uh, at the level of our regional platform for dialogue, research, innovation uh, under the auspices of the Union for the Mediterranean. And we have seen a great, uh, uh, immediately a great deal of uh, will to work together by the ministries of education and of research of our 43 member states, which shows, which. Uh, during a lockdown, how much this is important really for the, the, our collective security. On the other hand, we, have, uh, we, we are seeing that the, from the pandemic that, uh, that we need to shift, to change our way for, for working together. I mean, immediately we have gone to digital means, entire universities have switched to uh, new ways of cooperating and working together. Uh, and this has shown, first of all, that universities are flexible. Even though we, have, uh, we often hear that uh, we often use the, the, the same means and it's very difficult to change, when prompted to change, we have we discovered university can change immediately. And, and also we have discovered that we need to change uh, our, the way in which we prepare students and researchers for, the, for a job market afterwards. We cannot just uh, give for granted that the tools that are coming from the past are valid even for the future. So this raises also a question of the future of work. And uh, how can we do this together? First of all, we need to make the best practices a bit to emerge. So there is a great space for, for cooperation. It, it is not a secret that the Mediterranean, unfortunately, is not uh, the, the most, the easiest region when we want to uh, to, to prepare students for a job market. It's not a very easy job market. We, don't, we have not developed yet the best uh, tools that we can for empowering our students, our research to find a job afterwards. But what we do have, it's a lot of good practices. We have a lot of universities, research centers going for innovative way for pushing the students. And here there is a great potential of uh, international dialogue, international cooperation for joining together. First of all, VUA, VUA has an, a, a, a nice practice, a good idea to share, to make other people join in initiatives that exist, and together discuss what are the bottlenecks, what are the, the tools that we have at our disposal. It, there is a great deal of opportunity, of potential, if we want to join uh, our hands together, if we want to go a bit further. We cannot just assume that um, universities and research centers are just a tool for education for research because uh, the double nature of, uh, of such institutions is that it is also a member of the society. So it is part of uh, how we, how society react when there is a need for more knowledge to create, for creating new solutions. And if we do it in an isolated way, it's, uh, it's not as effective as we do it in, uh, in a more integrated manner. 
networks of universities are already a very advanced way for doing it. Networks such as the Unimed from one side, the sub-network for employability are a way in which we can uh, uh, cooperate more together. But as we know, now in, uh, in the ELIX, there are not only universities. The, the, the ELIX that we have structured, there is also university from one side, but we also have society, we also have government. So we have a need for a multi-stakeholder dialogue, for multi-actorial dialogue. And in this, the Union for the Mediterranean has been pushing uh, during the last years for trying to create a more structured ways for cooperating together for the, the nexus that exists between the employability of students and of researchers and the innovation of the economy. Uh, for instance, we have been launching uh, during the last year, uh, even during the pandemic, uh, an initiative supported by the, the German Development Cooperation for reinforcing the network that exists between innovation and employability. We, have, we, we are very thankful for the support given uh, by, by UNIMED also for uh, uh, power in this initiative because it was essential to hear the voices of universities coming from the ground and uh, on, on, this, on this regard. And I'm sure that today we can uh, get uh, from the, our panelists, but also from our attendees, a lot of good inputs and good practice that we can uh, put to practice in our, in our actions. So I will, I will stop here, otherwise I will talk for too much, but I want to learn as much as I can from you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Giuseppe, for this uh, uh, general vision of uh, what is being uh, done. And also it's good to uh, know that uh, there is really motivation and will to move forward. Uh, I will now pass the floor to um, uh, Raniero uh, Kelly. And with an opening question, um, what is the role of uh, universities and research organizations in promoting the nexus between innovation, entrepreneurship and employability? So, Raniero, if you can take the floor, if you wish. So, thank you, Joao, for, uh, for this question and for inviting me. I would also like to thank my friend Giuseppe for having said most of the things I was going to say. So he will make my life much easier <laughs> and my, my intervention shorter. Uh, because when we talk about uh, <clears throat> the role of uh, universities and research centers uh, in, in fighting uh, for employability, it is clear that uh, uh, the linking ring is uh, uh, the idea of uh, entrepreneurship and uh, enterprise creation, which most of the times <clears throat> happens in the frame of, uh, uh, let's say, the, what is called innovation centers, incubators, uh, science park, and uh, you name them. I, I, I was with, uh, together with, uh, with Giuseppe at the beginning of uh, December in Cairo, in this meeting about uh, regional cooperation, about uh, uh, higher education, and uh, there was the vice minister for education of, of the uh, Egypt, who very proudly said that uh, uh, we were talking about the gender issue in, in, in uh, Egyptian university. And he said, we have like, I don't know, 60% of women in our universities. And he was very proud of that. And I, <clears throat> and I asked uh, a quite disturbing question, I think, uh, which was, okay, that's fine, but how, uh, how, what is the percentage of these women who find a job after graduating? Because in fact, this is the real point. It's not how many people go to the university, but how many of them find, find a job. And he, uh, he looked at me, he was not very happy about this question, I have to say, but it's just to say that we have to take a sort of into consideration a sort of value chain, which goes from university and research to uh, incubators, to enterprise creation, startups, and, uh, employer, and generation of new jobs and employability. Uh, I had a, a discussion, I think, about uh, 10 years ago in Tunisia with some colleagues. I was giving this kind of message, and they said, it's very nice what you are saying, but in our culture, this is not yet there. We don't have this culture of incubators. Now, I have to say that 10, after 10 years, the situation has radically changed. I have seen very, very impressive things in Jordan, at Jordan University, incubators which we seldom see, uh, even in Italy, 
in, in Lebanon, I know very well the situation. Uh, the Beritech is one of the most uh, respected institutions uh, and so on and so forth. Going, uh, going west up to Morocco, Tunisia, etc. There are very relevant uh, experiences in terms of uh, innovation promotion, uh, entrepreneurship uh, within the, the context of incubators. So this is a culture which has developed very quickly, I have to say, 10 years is, is nothing if you think of it. Uh, in some countries, of course, the situation is not uh, so much developed for other reasons. As Marcello said, we had this long meeting with the, the Libyan colleagues yesterday, uh, but Libya has been completely isolated for many, many years. So in their case, it is a culture which has to be uh, developed. That is to say that cooperation, regional cooperation, in this field, we think is a very, very important, uh, let's say, tool uh, in order to improve, uh, to improve the situation. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> I have been trying for the last, uh, as I say, 10 years to launch a project in terms of creating a Euro-Mediterranean network of incubators. A network which should be uh, both a virtual network and a physical network. What I mean is that we are looking for a number of physical nodes, physical incubators, which are linked into a network that al would allow them to exchange information, knowledge, but also uh, commercial opportunities. If I set up a startup in Lebanon, which is doing something very innovative, uh, and I am connected to similar structures in Morocco or in Tunisia, it, having, having this network open would facilitate the opening up to the market uh, of, of whatever happens in any one of the nodes. I have submitted several proposals to the, to the European Commission. They were never accepted, but I keep trying. Uh, and I urge, I urge, the participants, uh, those who are attending, for instance, this, this, uh, this meeting uh, today, who are interested in this kind of topic, please get in touch with me. You can find my email address or you can write to Sylvia and this will uh, bounce back to me uh, because we are, we are still trying to implement this, uh, this idea, which I think would, uh, would uh, be very useful and, and uh, uh, supportive for the creation of, of jobs in the Euro Mediterranean, and it would be, I uh, think you will agree with me, it would be uh, a very clear form of regional cooperation in terms of promoting employability. So thank you, that was more or less what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Raniero, um, uh, to introduce us to this um, project of the Network of Incubators, which is really, really um, um, interesting and i hope there will be uh, interest in, in contacting you and moving forward so um i will I give the floor uh, now to professor selim magdesi um, from um, the lebanese university so um i will um ask professor how can regional cooperation on uh, education and research uh, increase employability, and also how to improve uh, this multi-stakeholder uh, regional dialogue, uh, especially uh, in favor of employability of young people. Professor, you can take the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. So, uh, well, as all the participants know, we are living in a world facing many complex problems, which cannot be solved by uh, regulatory means alone, but which uh, require I think more than anything else, a real change, change of mindset, uh, some innovations. Most countries now expect their universities uh, to play a much uh, larger and more decisive role in finding solutions than in the past. And uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, Marcel Scalini said in the webinar introduction today, the university has to direct its students towards innovation. Um, region, in my opinion, regional cooperation 
has become one of the objectives of higher education institutions and all around the globe. It's a very important tool, as uh, uh, our colleague, uh, Mr. Raniero said, it's really a tool nowadays. Higher education institutions have integrated this objective and its strategic guidelines within various strategies for the internationalization of their students, but also of their professors and their programs, as well with the aim to prepare the letter for the labor market in a globalized world. Uh, I think that diversity internationalization strategies are the result of the fact that stakeholders in higher education in general consider that they can import best practices, as you said uh, uh, at the beginning, and innovation processes, and therefore encourage to share and to develop best practices. Uh, well, it is without any up that regional cooperation constitutes for higher education institutions a tool for development, which benefits to the economy and to the society. Well, we can say, for example, the, I don't know, the international mobility of students for the personal development of the students, as well as development of life skills, scientific competences, uh, foreign language skills, intercultural understanding. Uh, we can discuss many points, in fact, which in turn, improves employability in the labor market that is becoming increasingly international nowadays, uh, especially in Lebanon. These are the foundations for the creation of substantial programs, uh, for example, Erasmus uh, program, Nexus, uh, in order to support regional cooperation. Uh, we can talk also about the regional dialogue process as uh, UNIMED and Union for the Mediterranean are doing now, which aims at strengthening regional cooperation and synergies on higher education institutions and academic mobility in view of amplifying quality partnerships. It's not only partnerships, it's about quality partnerships between educational institutions throughout the Mediterranean and enhancing further either north-south or south-north mobility, as well as uh, south-south academic mobility also, at a time when the need for mutual understanding and youth opportunities, in particular related to the employability uh, theme, has never been so pressing in the region. In particular, I think it contributes uh, to improving uh, shared knowledge, understanding of internationaliz internationalization trends and policies, facilitating continuous peer learning among our countries on policies, practices, addressing common challenges, priorities, such as intra-regional mobility, recognition of qualifications, governance, quality assurance, brain circulation, uh, fostering the implementation of joint projects and initiatives and shape a regional strategy on higher education internationalization and academic mobility, reinforcing regional integration. Well, we all acknowledge the importance of fostering regional cooperation through a balanced comb combination of multilateral dialogue with tangible short-term actions and achievements. Uh, this is my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Thank you, uh, Professor. So we are happy to uh, grasp that um, there is also motivation. At the Union for the Mediterranean, uh, um, we are really working you know, to develop this, uh, identify uh, uh, this uh, strategy, and uh, it's one of, of the priorities in the division for, for the next year and for the current year, and we are working on it. Um, I will uh, give the floor now to Mrs. Uh, Aravella Zaccariu uh, from Cyprus. And uh, 
I proposed that she could uh, censor uh, a bit of the um, discussion on, on the, the current pandemic. So on the role of universities uh, in the post pandemic era, and also how uh, universities will have to rethink uh, their role uh, according to the new challenges. So, uh, Mrs. Zakariu, uh, you can you can take the floor. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, thank uh, Giuseppe for inviting me to be with you today. Um, I was thinking a lot about this issue since uh, I have many hats. Um, here with my affiliation as a chair of the UNCSD steering committee, but also I'm an associate professor in Frederick University and I'm working in the policy field in Ministry of Education and Culture. Uh, I mentioned this because there is a very big discussion uh, and in international forum, but also and in many countries like in Cyprus about the role of higher education and uh, the changes that we may need to see in the next few months uh, because of COVID and the, the pandemic. Uh, so I think that it's very important to, uh, it's great that uh, we have the opportunity to discuss uh, uh, this issue and it's time to unite our voices about the future of, of higher education in these uncertain times, and of course in our region, the Mediterranean region. Uh, trying to put some thoughts and some uh, issues that um, revealed from the discussions that we have already in other regional areas or in international level like in UN. And uh, of course from the discussions that we are having in, in my country, I kept some notes uh, I think that they exceed five minutes, but I will try to synthesize them in order to be uh, in, in the time that I have. Uh, the first of all is that um, higher education, the last two decades especially, have uh, made enormous uh, changes. Uh, nevertheless, uh, COVID showed that at the end of the day, higher education, despite the developments, uh, didn't manage to provide to the society and to the systems, I mean, economical, social, political, the tools that uh, um, we need in order to keep things in, in balance. Um, the, according to this, many things raised through this pandemic, which has to do with uh, critical questions where, where education is going on, um, uh, raised issues which has to do with inequalities. Um, uh, of course, the biggest uh, discussion is where the labor market is going, what is going to happen with the jobs, with employment uh, and, and with unemployment. Um, according to this, the role of higher education in this post-pandemic era is critical. And this is because universities are communities of learning, which can reshape and our, our future, humanity's future, youth future, towards a much more resilient system. And of course, they are the institutions that they can deliver a pedagogy of hope which can inspire and motivate people to use their abilities for their own benefit, for the benefit of the society, for the benefit of the environment and the planet, of course. Uh, universities in this critical uh, uh, situation have a role to have a role for a change and they can lead the change because they are the agents of change and the agents of innovation. And especially in this post-COVID period, the universities must see this crisis as an opportunity for rethink their role. 
this need, uh, uh, this needs uh, to understand that uh, in post pandemic uh, period, will not be back to business as usual. And going back to normality means that this normality will cannot be as was, but must be for best, for the better. Aiming to change people's frame of mind, to create more healthy societies, to protect ecosystems, to create inclusive and equity societies, and of course, to respect all the other living things. God, I want to raise some issues and before conclude. Pandemia reveals some very important issues for the future of higher education and connected with the challenges and uncertainty that is academia, we have the responsibility to change. First, it reveals the lack of confidence and inspire our leaders that will think for the well-being of humans. The second, the issue that uh, um, was critical in this period is that science, research, and scientists regain their place to the society. Scientists all over the world join forces against COVID, but also join their voices against popularism. This uh, a pandemic can be considered as a wake-up call to reconsider our priorities and to re-examine what is important or not important. Shows that even the progress and development, we are very fragile and not prepared as persons in societies to confront such crises. Revealed that such crises can trigger change and the pandemic shown the significance and the necessity of the terms of adaptation and mitigation of institutions that are critical to limit the impacts and consequences of COVID. The aforementioned issues is uh, call us to rethink what kind and type of higher education we want and how and in which ways this COVID bring before us critical questions which are always relevant and have now, but now become more pressing and requiring urgent solutions and actions. This has to do with critical concepts. Uh, critical concepts or how we have, how we, uh, we change from, to, from transmission to transformation. This is very important to think about it. It's very conceptual issues, but this at the end of the day, maybe will uh, help us and will give us the um, uh, uh, um, proposals and ideas to change things. How, for example, we move from the connectivity to more authentic relations and partnerships. And of course, how we move from global to global means we acknowledge the global reality, but we have to uh, put this in our local context. According to this, and I'm going to a concluding remark, I would like to mention that we need to revise curricula. We need to reconsider our pedagogies, our methodologies, our structures, operations, and infrastructures. We have to see that we are not knowledge institutions, but we have to move to competence-based programs. Maybe we'll have to see how we can work together through an, an interdisciplinary collaboration to see how disciplines, they can become together in an osmosis. Finally, I would like to close by saying that higher education, as all the other sectors of life, we must learn from this crisis and we must learn in order to be competent to avoid a new one crisis or to confront the other more actively. We have to see ourselves, not only as academic teachers and researchers, isolated from the rest of the society, but we must see ourselves as the precursors that can put the foundations for creating more resilient, just and sustainable societies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Zakario, uh, for your inspiring inputs. Um, uh, lots of uh, inspiring inputs that now we have to uh, work out and um, 
we have retained, yes, then the, the, the normality uh, will, will be for the better in this global uh, world. Um, I will pass the floor now to uh, our last uh, panelist, uh, Mrs. Uh, Yasmin uh, Segirat from Siam. And um, I will ask her to focus on, on sustain sustainability sustainability and environmental uh, issues and how um, should they be um, factored in for learning and uh, research to increase uh, resilience in the Mediterranean. How um, these uh, issues, um, environmental issues can, um, can help us to build, uh, uh, to increase re resilience uh, in the region. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Giuseppe, UFM, and Unimed uh, for this very interesting uh, uh, invitation. And uh, I hope perhaps next time we'll have the opportunity to meet uh, physically and to give uh, uh, effects to the Mediterranean cooperation. So, very quickly, uh, I will just say uh, one word about SIAM to better understand uh, my, uh, my presentation. So, the SIAM is a Mediterranean organization. Uh, devoted to training, research, and cooperation for rural development and agriculture and fisheries. So we are active at both ends of the youth employment chain, since on the one hand we train students and on the other one we implement local development projects that mostly consist in creating jobs or improving agro-food value chains. So uh, very quickly, how can sustainability and environmental consideration should be factored? Uh, let me very quickly address the main challenges to which SIAM is trying to provide solution. Uh, in our region, uh, climate change, the acceleration of salinization, soil erosion, and the frequency of drought weigh heavily on food security and are likely to increase over the years. Uh, of all sectors of activity, agriculture and the fishing sector are the most climate dependent. A minor climate shock can destroy months of work. And that's not to mention the side effects of climate change, for example, the increase of crop pests or the appearance of, of uh, what we call invasive species. Due to their uh, strong population growth, uh, a lot of southern uh, Mediterranean countries face another challenge. It's called food dependence. Uh, they import large quantity of food and it makes them very vulnerable to rising prices or to crises like the one we are going through. Uh, of course, another problem, major problem, is water. By 2025, uh, we estimate that all North African and Eastern and Near Eastern uh, states will uh, fall into the category of what we call water scarcity. And again, it, this situation is obviously will have direct effects on agriculture, which is a major user of water. Finally, when we talk about sustainability, we cannot ignore inclusive development issues. There is an important development gap between rural and urban areas in the Mediterranean countries. And for example, rural population are very often the poorest. They have less access to essential services like health, education, banking. Uh, informal work is very common in agriculture with all the negative consequences that you can imagine on working condition or even on the level of remuneration. And when these population live mainly from agriculture or livestock, and when they are no longer able to carry out their activities due to environmental problems, conflict, but also like uh, uh, the, 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 confin the, the confinement, <laughs> I forgot how you say it in English, lockout. Uh, the lockout, uh, lockout. They, are, uh, they, they, they found themselves in a very difficult situation. And very often they are pushed to move to cities or to other countries with dramatic consequences. Uh, so in view of all these elements, yeah, I'm really convinced that, uh, of the strategic importance of agriculture and food for peace and stability. And the COVID crisis uh, revealed it uh, very quickly. The health issue has been associated to the food issue. And for your information, uh, in the SIAM, we are preparing a study on the COVID impact in agriculture, and it should be published in autumn. If you're interested, I, I will, I will uh, give you some more information. So 
To face these connected challenges, of course, the role of training and research is fundamental. In the headquarters and in our four agronomic institutes, we are going to develop initiatives and projects that aim to make agriculture and more broadly sustainable food system, uh, to make them assets and not weak points of resilience. So we try to train students and support the young researchers to be actors of the positive agenda of the Mediterranean, where the agriculture and food system will have an important and strategic place. So one, for example, uh, initiative we launched to achieve these objectives is the Mediterranean Forum. Uh, and we worked a lot on it with the UFM. It's a forum that gathers PhD students and young researchers. And they contribute to sharing knowledge, innovation, good practices, but also the, this kind of meeting and forum, they help us to enrich the social capital and the network of these young people who are very motivated to improve things. Uh, so every two years we address specific issues. For example, the Met Forum of, of 2016 was about food security and rural development. Uh, the one in 2018 was about SDGs. The proceedings are online on the, on the website of, of the SIAM. And the next MED forum will take place in Tunisia, inshallah, in, to, in next year. And it will focus on dry areas and agri-food system. So uh, as an intergovernmental organization, uh, we have the opportunity of connecting training and research to the local development needs. Uh, that are identified by our member states. Uh, for example, uh, at the, re the request of the countries, we have been working these years a lot on projects where the entrepreneurial and social innovation dimension is very strong. You know it, uh, a lot of the, the SIEM member countries, the South countries, uh, have in unemployment rates uh, very important for youth and women. So from now on, we are really training uh, and we are trying to work on, on a, a new offer of, of training that will offer uh, uh, and, and will show uh, that the agriculture, the fishing and the livestock sectors can not only provide sustainable jobs, but they can also create the profession of the future with a high added and social environmental value and in which the new generation, graduated or not, would like to project themselves professionally. For this, we are now developing new models of, of, uh, of learning, increasingly proactive and learning through practice. And we promote uh, uh, a lot of the development of the entrepreneurial culture. Uh, finally, and I'll finish with that, we often that the worlds of the research or administration are cut from the reality on the ground very often. They, we do not speak the same language as the farmer, the breeder, or the fisherman. So in order to, uh, uh, to, to address this issue, we have launched, the, the, again with the UFM, the Field Research Initiative. Uh, and it, this project is only in, invite PhD students and young researchers from the Mediterranean to undertake uh, short-term field research and in close collaboration with the local communities, of course, to find solutions together to important issues that are, that are uh, food, nutrition, security, climate change, or even plant health. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Yasmin, for it gives hope uh, listening to you, and this is very good in, 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 the, in the moments we are, we are living and to understand that, yes, this effort for, for field research or in-field research is, opens up to new possibilities, uh, creating uh, new the professions and uh, um, really understanding that this crisis, uh, even if it's very uh, hard, can be also a, a, an opportunity. Um, so it's four o'clock now, uh, Sylvia, um, and we don't have much uh, questions um, in the chat. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see uh, questions, but I don't know if participants that are attending, they would like to intervene. They can just raise their hands and I will allow them to, to talk. Or otherwise, I don't know, Drao, if you mm -hmm. have other Perhaps other questions or last word from our speakers, or we can pass to the second round table. Just let's check. 
I don't see any. Uh, any, any. Yeah. No, uh, yes. But, ah, there is Manav. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a question. It's not my question, but it's a question of one of the participants who actually I have invited and had to leave. And he ah, okay. wrote me the question to, uh, to ask to the panelists, and then I will. Okay, great. The, um, the record. So he's, um, he's in business interested in young employment and his question is the following how unimed would help all the future graduates from universities to find jobs during this covid 19 economic crisis where all companies will fire people and even public organization will not have enough additional budget for a new employment position so he's here is, we have the point of view of uh, someone um, really involved in the business life. So it's a bit scary to see that there is some movement that will happen in the business side. So the question is how universities could deal with that in preparing students, future graduates um, in that critical situation. So I hope I have took faithfully his question. <laughs> Yes, it's quite uh, challenging. Um, I don't know if Janiero, you, you want to say uh, something about it? I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> going. <laughs> um, so it's a great honor to answer to this question. Well, I mean, we have to be uh, frank and realistic. There's no way we can help in the very short term uh, with this problem because uh, only only governments can do that i mean uh, with uh, because that, that there is clearly a problem on uh, incentivating uh, companies to hiring uh, providing subsidies to people who are unemployed and so on and so forth so in the short term there's not very much we can do uh, in the medium term we will increase the the pressure on the idea of promoting entrepreneurship through for instance innovation incubators etc which we see as a means of creating uh, employment, of creating jobs. Uh, I don't know in the other countries. What I'm, what I'm seeing in Italy, for instance, is that the government, uh, at least in words, they are promising uh, to support uh, companies which have had uh, problems due to the virus, uh, to, the, to the lockdown. Uh, they try to promote um, the creation of new startups, they are trying to promote the export, they are trying to promote all those activities which are meant to, uh, to create jobs, but all, of course, uh, new jobs will be uh, qualified jobs, it will not be for unqualified persons. So uh, higher, higher education uh, training will be all the more important in order to be able to grab these kind of opportunities, which I'm sure will happen at least in Italy and I suppose also in the other countries in the next uh, six months. And Nurimed is here uh, as, as a network, uh, as, as a platform for exchanging uh, opportunities and, and uh, ideas and uh, trying to promote uh, also international mobility, which is also a tool for promoting uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I wouldn't say more than that. I don't know if Silvia or Marcello want to add something to that. I don't know. Well, yes, as you said, it's a, it's a very, it's on a long term perspective. And of course, as we said before, we, we should work together and try to build a, a regional dialogue on this, on this topic. Uh, I think that, yes, I will give yes. us the floor to Joao because there are other questions. Yeah. Yes, there are several. And we have a, a question from uh, Ruben. In fact, I think uh, you are, a, you can, um, yes, you can talk now if you want. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Joao, and thank you very much to all the panelists and you for this very interesting panel. Uh, I was curious. I want to, that's a question for 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 Jasmine. Okay. I was curious about uh, in in the case of I mean agriculture, fishing, and that kind of stuff. That probably the kind of university studies that are delivering most of universities are uh, intended to a very high level, I mean, in those kind of organizations, how we could close the gap, I mean, with the actual uh, actual everyday work 
that could appear that can appear in a small uh, small firms or small industries that maybe don't have uh, the kind of very specialized profiles that usually are produced in the university in these studies. Yes, thank you very much for your question. Uh, well, uh, indeed, um, closing the gap is really at, at the core uh, uh, of our activities. And I mentioned this uh, initiative for the field research because, uh, uh, again, uh, bringing the laboratories and, and uh, researchers in the field uh, may develop other uh, opportunities of work. Uh, for example, I don't in in the the, the, the south uh, country in the, in the North African countries we uh, the, the, and in Europe again uh, we have uh, uh, the sector of agri agriculture and fishing uh, is struggling to to uh, to uh, uh, recruit young people and uh, they uh, they are very open to to introduce innovation very open to introduce digitalization but. Perhaps there is something to, to think about a, a better connection between uh, these worlds and the, the universities by uh, making more field, by perhaps working on the attractiveness of, of uh, the, these, uh, these fields of activity, introducing innovation, introducing uh, technologies. And for example, uh, we have an average, a terrible average in, in the South uh, countries, uh, the, the average of, of, uh, of age of agriculture is, is uh, 57 years old and we don't have this uh, 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 renewal of generation so uh, the, the the role of the an actor of the siam is first of all to uh, of course uh, uh, bring that technical uh, training and to and, and to, to to train this high level but also as much as possible to to bring the, these uh, studies in the field to make them in contact with local administration local activities and and try to imagine uh, wh what can be uh, proposed along the agro uh, uh, agro food value chain uh, pre uh, mobilizing innovation but also uh, working on in uh, entrepreneurial and, and startups Thank you uh, very much, uh, Yasmin. I think Aravella wants to uh, say something. Yes, thank you. I just want to comment that uh, something on the question that uh, Manal said before. Uh, I want to see, I, I want just to say that it's very important to see uh, these things in a more positive lens. I think uh, that uh, universities in higher education has to can have a very critical role in this chaos of unemployment. And uh, from my point of view, it's also a moral issue from universities because uh, we have not to see ourselves now, universities not being just as educational institutions, but as social learning organizations that have a critical role to play in social co cohesion and in integrity. And uh, firing people from their works means, as a system, more other things. So I think that universities they can work together with the poli policy makers. And it's time to work also with the companies, the trades, uh, to ensure that this year of gra graduates will not become a lost generation. It's very critical and they have to push a pressure because that's why uh, we said many times that through, from the universities we have the critical thinking, with, uh, it's a place of incubator, it's a place that uh, science is opening roads to the others. So I think that uh, uh, universities with their data, with their facts and with their research, they can uh, push the politicians to put in policy agendas as a high priority, the youth unemployment and employment. And from my point of view, it's very critical to work together on uh, and uh, to work to elaborate schemes. Schemes, not for unemployment, but for employment. We have to see this because mainly we are talking on how we can support the unemployed people, but if we transmit this, transform this, or how to employ people, I'm sure that things will can be better. 
I'm just saying this from my experience here in Cyprus, where now we are supporting not the unemployment, but we are supporting companies and trades to employ. And this was a big work and uh, with plans that developed jointly from the universities and with the government. Thank you. Thank you so much for this um, really important uh, issue of uh, moral issue and the cooperation um, between universities and policymakers. Um, I think Giuseppe, uh, do you want to uh, add something? Uh, yes, just uh, just very briefly. First of all, I like a lot this change of perspective presented by Aravella, working not against un unemployment, but for employment. Mm. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, we here have now a big opportunity in our hand. Now we are uh, at, at global level, we are discussing about how to go into a recovery after the, this economic crisis, which followed the health crisis. Uh, governments, uh, uh, the European Union, uh, ins regional institutions are looking for solutions. Solutions for kickstarting the economic recovery. Universities, companies here have a, a huge opportunity for presenting and making the case for using employability, entrepreneurship, and the cooperation between uh, universities and research centers from one side and the private and business sector to the others as a key element for relaunching economic growth. Um, when, when, how, how can we close this kind of gap? We can focus on, on dialogue, the dialogue aspect, which can be very local. Local universities can start their own practices for talking to the private sector and very regional, which is how can we push for regional dialogue in this direction. This is why when we are uh, trying to structure such a dialogue in the, in the Union for the Mediterranean, we are using two axes. One, which is more employability, which is skills, which is curriculum. And the other is more innovation and entrepreneurship. Because the other key element is that when there is, there are not, there is not a huge offer of jobs, there is always the opportunity for creating new employment by going for entrepreneurship. So I think that these two pillars can be used uh, to be pushed by uh, universities, by university uh, networks, uh, by ministries of education as a key element to put on the table when uh, institutions, when governments, when the European Union want to go for recovery. So this can be something where we can operate all and raise visibility for our policymaker to work on. Thank you, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, Silvia, I don't know how we, we, we have interesting inputs, but I th we might uh, be running uh, out of time. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that I would like really thanks all the speakers and you, Joao, for this uh, very interesting and enriching uh, panel. And uh, yes, I think we can pass to the second round table. We have other four speakers. And uh, so thank you again, Joao, for moderating this session. Uh, thanks to all the, our speakers. And this session, as I was mentioning before and in introduction, is focused on practical cases and experiences of dialogue between uh, universities and educational institution and private sector industry. So now we, we have heard about the, the need and the necessity uh, to bridge the gap between labor markets so an industry and university and the need to collaborate with ministries, with governments, with the local society in order to boost employment and to uh, encourage local development. Now we would like to hear the experience, a concrete uh, a practice uh, case studies from, uh, from two universities in the region. Uh, we will have uh, with us Ashraf Bani, the Director of Innovation Entrepreneurship Center, Associate Professor of Technology and Management School of Business at the University of Jordan in Jordan. And I would like to start with, uh, with him. So, uh, dear Ashraf, if you can share with us the experience of your university, in particular of your, of your entrepreneurship uh, innovation center that you are managing, how you are trying to combine uh, employment uh, for graduates, in, uh, for Jordan students and uh, youth, and how you are, you are trying with your university at institutional level to increase the cooperation with the industry. 
um, the floor is yours, uh, which I, I also invite you to be uh, brief and efficient as usual. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashraf. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, good afternoon, all. I, I really enjoyed uh, all, the, all the, this great discussion. C can you, can you uh, raise a little bit the, the volume of your uh, micro? It's a little bit... Uh, Maybe, maybe the screen is better. It's better, yes, okay. thank you. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, this, uh, the first panel and uh, I love the idea of having, you know, a Euro uh, Mediterranean uh, incubators. I, I, I would fight with you. Um, anyway, uh, I think uh, there is sometimes, I, I, I don't know, I'm afraid to talk sometimes about the truth, but the truth is totally different. <clears throat> Actually, the private sector is not always uh, as we see. And especially, I mean, in the developing countries, it's not supporting that much. They don't trust academia. There are a huge amount of challenges. When we talk about uh, get public universities, then we are talking about bureaucracy. So uh, maybe I'll be a little bit, uh, I, I, I wanna give you this introduction, then I'll tell you about two cases. Actually, we have uh, we are working with the, the largest telecom operator in Jordan, Zane, and they have already, <clears throat> you know, helped us in building a co-working space and supporting our students. And we have internships, and they, we have <clears throat> together a, a program where our student, our graduates, uh, goes uh, to 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 this internship and then get employed. They get training and then they get employed. And <clears throat> we have kicked off uh, maybe Yasmin. Uh, touched a point about female, uh, you know, female employment rate. It's really huge, you know. So we are trying now to create a program for <clears throat> the female, uh, uh, both entrepreneurs and uh, the, the ones who are looking for a job. So we are now cre creating a model with Zane, uh, this telecom operator, to uh, develop a training that ends with an employability, uh, with an employment opportunity. Uh, again, the gap is really huge. This is one case. The other case is with uh, another company, which is a startup. We can call it a startup, in, at least in Jordan. But they are really, you know, hiring more than, they hired last year more than 300 content writers. Uh, it's Moldova. And uh, another one, also a startup, which is Salalan, which is also hiring, you know, this year they, they hired like 15 from our graduates. Uh, and still, but again, still the gap is there, you know, <clears throat> the curriculums, the, uh, what we are teaching at the university is totally, uh, you know, far from the market need. And, you know, <clears throat> this gap, uh, you know, to change all this curriculum, uh, study plans, uh, going with this, uh, with this process is really hectic, especially in, in, high, uh, in public higher education. Uh, <clears throat> this is... <clears throat> What we are seeing, although <clears throat> sometimes we they get frustrated, the private sector doesn't, you know, uh, trust much the the, the research and the innovation and the startups and even the the, the curriculums that are uh, you know used at the universities. Nowadays, we are trying to like uh, bylaw. We are trying to change the bylaws, our bylaws, in order to incorporate more and more private sector leaders into our councils, into our uh, 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 curriculum development, study plan development, uh, ask them more and communicate with them more. Yet, I hope uh, we, are, uh, we are optimistic that uh, <clears throat> things are changing. Um, uh, the universities uh, in the region, uh, especially in the public sector, are uh, uh, looking more into that, we need to listen more to the private sector, and I truly believe that. Um, and I hope that also our students are also more informed that, okay, if we want to we get uh, just a certificate, then we will, uh, it will be nothing without, uh, you know, having a practical, some type of practical experience and practical knowledge and going to some interns, train, uh, taking some extra curriculum courses and all this stuff. Uh, I have to be brief. This is um, basically, uh, we are working also with the Fab Lab. We, we, we are trying to utilize also the, all the incubators that are, we have more than 120 actors in Jordan. I mean, stakeholder in the uh, innovation, employability, and uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem. 
we are building, we are trying to build uh, this ecosystem and to support this ecosystem in order to complement each other. And I hope that at one point or another, universities, private sector, venture capital, incubators, everybody can understand that it's a complementary work. It's a cooperational work. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Ashraf. I, I have some questions for you, but I will leave at the end. So I will give the, the floor uh, now to our second speaker for this panel, Mahmoud Hawamde. Um, Mahmoud uh, is a PhD candidate in Computer Education Institu Instruction Technology at the Near East University in North Cyprus. He served as a Director of Continued Education and Community Service at Al-Quds Open University. And he, so he was also responsible for the overall direction, development coordination supervision of center of the center uh, Mahmoud so uh, I, I, I ask you the same the same I ask Ashraf how, how things uh, in, uh, in the al Quds Open University are going on related to the, this topic and uh, if you can give us some uh, concrete examples um, about uh, your experience on the topic the topic thank you so much uh, okay thank you Sylvia and thank you for your remit for this opportunity uh, to be with you here and to share our uh, experience uh, in the partnership with the private sector and in, uh, and in the ability of the, our graduates. Uh, first of all, uh, let me just give you a brief description about Al Quds Open University. Uh, Al Quds Open University is a Palestinian independent public university. Uh, it was established uh, by the Palestinian Liberty Organization (PLO) and started operating in Palestine in 1991. Uh, Al-Quds University adopts the blended education system, uh, which uh, traditional education system and system. Uh, that's no time or location barriers. It's provide the opportunity for higher, uh, high quality education and learning and uh, uh, at convenient uh, uh, cost. Um, flexibility that the uh, uh, University offer for, for, for the, the students uh, and the quality of educational system. The number of learners uh, uh, registered in the university has increased uh, to be more uh, than 50,000 students. Uh, the university has 22 um, uh, uh, branches and study centers spread all over the, the country. Uh, in addition also to two uh, uh, branches in, in Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Uh, the university established uh, Alumni uh, Affairs Department, uh, which aims at building a uh, bridge of trust and dialogue uh, between the university graduate and the different private sector. Uh, the, department, the department has uh, agreement and partnership with, with several numbers of local uh, private sector to enhance the students, graduates' uh, capability and the skills to meet the needs of uh, the uh, labor market. Uh, uh, this alumni uh, department uh, is aimed to networking with the private institute and establish a partnership with uh, uh, an agreement to obtain a jobs and training opportunity for our graduates. Uh, also establish a communication with private sector in order to promote the employability of graduates uh, and finding uh, uh, you know the best job opportunity for for them, and also uh, this this department is also providing training and career uh, counseling services for uh, the graduates and helping them uh, you know to select the, the best job and career for uh, for them. Uh, so uh, through this this department, the university uh, implemented the several projects uh, with the private sector in order to uh, you know uh, to enhance the skills of our graduates uh, and also to uh, provide them to find the job uh, in, the, uh, in, the, <coughs> in the labor market. One of this uh, this project is a training project with with local banks in Palestine. We called this uh, specialized banker. Uh, for our students in business and economy factories. Uh, the, the program uh, aimed to upgrade the practics, uh, practical skills uh, of the, the university students in order uh, to help them uh, meet the needs of banking market. Uh, the training also uh, aimed to train the students to be a professional banker. Uh, this program, it was its the first 
and uh, in, in Palestine that target uh, senior uh, students who in the year of study, the training program includes training hours uh, distributed on several um, uh, you know, uh, sections, uh, the most important of which are banking culture, banking system, uh, money laundering over, uh, operations, uh, banking risk uh, communication skills, uh, presentation, customer uh, care, uh, and uh, other 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 sections. Um, this program is was built um, in, in something we call it uh, work-based learning approach. It was a very uh, specific education program that bring uh, the university and work organization to create a learning opportunity in workplace. So this uh, this type of education are commonly highly structured and the process. Uh, formal academic and employer supervisor and, and assessment. Uh, we are trying also uh, to improve this program and to enhance outcomes by, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, get more engagement and more commitment from from uh, private sector, as you, uh, as as uh, Professor Hisham said, that the uh, private sector in in, in, in developing country uh, they you know, they don't they don't have a commitment actually uh, to be uh, uh, more in trust uh, in in this uh, such uh, such uh, program. So um, we 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 are having challenging also uh, to have this kind of, of program in order in order to uh, enhance the skills of our students to be uh, qualified and to meet the uh, labor markets uh, need. So this is my, uh, uh, our experience uh, in a uh, quick brief. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mahmoud, for sharing your, your experience and your, your thoughts on, on the topic. Uh, indeed, uh, in the university in the region, uh, in general, I can say that it's very crucial to change the mentality of teachers and professors. Uh, somehow it's a problem of cultural, cultural problem and um, to change the mentality and to make awareness on, on the topic. And, that the four industries and so the private sectors and the governments and the local society should support also university and faculty members uh, to increase this awareness and to uh, to to adapt their mentality in order to adapt their curricula uh, that's why i think it's very it's very important this panel because we are putting together different stakeholders and different point of view so we can hear what are the needs from the universities and how uh, at the needs of the of the other stakeholders and, and how we can combine together uh, for a better future, for a better employment for all. And uh, so thank you very much, Mahmoud. So now we jump to the Maghreb region. So uh, after Jordan and Palestine, we, we go to Rabat, to Morocco. And I have the pleasure to uh, welcome Manal El Habubi. Uh, Manal is professor at University Mohammed V of Rabat. And she's also associate researcher at Economic Economia, uh, HEM Research Center in Morocco. She also a PhD in Economics and Management uh, uh, from the School of Univ Management School of University of Liège in Belgium. She works on social innovation, diversity management, corporate social responsibility and social economy. And uh, she has published several papers in high-ranked academic journals in this field. Uh, Manal, this floor is yours. We are uh, keen to hear your experience in, in Morocco. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Sylvia. Thank you for your introduction. Um, it's really a great pleasure for me to join the, the discussion today. And I would also like to, to thank our partners from the uh, Tampere University in Finland who have invited me to join this, uh, this webinar and this week. Uh, so thank you, um, uh, Henry and Kari, who are joining the, uh, the webinar as participants. So my contribution today will be mainly focused on uh, our experience uh, we are having in Economia. HM Research Center in building some strong and meaningful collaboration with companies mm -hmm. from uh, the private sector. Um, and I will mainly talk about one specific experience we have. Uh, it's called the Casablanca City Lab. So just first of all, some few words about Economia. It's a research center based in a business school in Rabat in Morocco. 
and we call Economia, uh, we label it as a bridge between academia and business. So it's mainly the DNA of uh, the research center is how to make links, strong links between um, both sites, business and academia. And um, to do that, or maybe to be able to do that, we, uh, we first of all adopt a kind of multidisciplinary approach. Uh, for every single project we are uh, launching, we try to involve researchers from different disciplines. Uh, our team is composed from researchers from social sciences, management, law. We have some architects, anthropologists, philosoph philosophy, economy, etc. So it's a very quite hard to deal with all those different disciplines as it's um, everyone, every discipline has its own way to analyze and understand realities. But this is actually something that uh, our partners appreciate very much, uh, particularly in our collaboration with uh, organization and with private sector. And in Economia, we are an organized by chairs. Uh, and I am uh, holding the uh, a chair called Social Innovation Chair. So we are uh, working closely on creating collaboration with uh, several stakeholders, whether are in the private or the public sector. Um, so to build some programs that could target young entrepreneurs uh, principally. Uh, and we are using uh, collaborative practices and presenting huge potential for uh, entrepreneurs and mainly for their scalability. So as an academic laboratory and research center with a very huge managerial uh, orientation, uh, our mission is to produce knowledge uh, with a very high uh, positive impact on society and with including the private sector with us. So let me now talk about this specific example uh, that we call the Casablanca City Lab uh, that we have conducted with a, a private company called uh, LIDEC in collaboration with the University of Tampere in Finland. So we have here an example with a very local company uh, embedded in its territory and also with an international uh, academic collaboration. Uh, so LIDEC um, is a company, the company that manages the distribution of drinking water and electricity in the city of Casablanca. It also manages the collection of wastewater and rainwater and the public lighting. So it's mainly the uh, main actor in terms of water uh, in uh, the big city of Casablanca. So the, the starting point was our discussion with the CSR team of LIDEC, the Corporate Social Responsibility Team with LIDEC. We have raised one question that we thought it could be an easy question, which is the following one. How could we have a great impact in the city of Casablanca? How could we, each of us, whether in academia or in the business life, could have this great, good, positive impact. So here we talk about social impact, economic, political, whatever, and for many uh, beneficiaries. So this particular question was interesting for uh, our academic partners also in Finland as part of uh, an international project called What Works, targeting youth employment in the MENA region, and then we made the, the disjunction between the need of the company, which is LIDEC in terms of uh, social impact and also um, international academic project, uh, the What Work project in, uh, in Finland. So very practically trying to answer that easy question about the social impact uh, grounded in the city of Casablanca. With our multidisciplinary team, we have organized several focus groups with internal and external stakeholder related to LIDEX business area. But then our added value is that we have proposed to uh, make the discussion also with some external stakeholders that have nothing to do with the LIDEX business area. So we have invited some artists, uh, some anthropologists, uh, associations, agricultures, 
entrepreneurs, students. So the company was absolutely not used to talk to those people. There was, they had a very great and a very formal stakeholder management. And we tried to have this added value to bring to the discussion some stakeholders that are, I would say, uncommon and unusual to the company. So the output of this dialogue let us formulate some specific issues, uh, mainly CSR issues apply to Casablanca, like mobility, citizen implication in the public life, green spaces, uh, youth interestment in the economic and political life, youth uh, employment, etc. So to answer to some of those issues, we have launched a call for project addressed mainly to entrepreneurs. So to bring solutions, to bring new ideas. We have selected some of those entrepreneurs and we set up um, a training program uh, with collaboration with uh, LIDEC team. So entrepreneurs selected had followed a particular training program, including designers, artists, sociologists, architects, and many other uh, challengers. This is what we call the um, program challengers. And those people helped our entrepreneurs uh, to make uh, or to strengthen their methodological uh, framework uh, to document and disseminate some innovative knowledge and know-how from competing projects and mainly to work uh, on the social impact of their projects uh, and to uh, work on the scalability of those uh, impact and mainly the valorization of this impact. So this was very meaningful for entrepreneurs, but also for LIDEC who was leading this project because then they have to uh, bring the whole solution to the CSR, the big CSR project of the company. So in 2000, we have launched that in 2019. We finished the first cycle in 2020. We have supported uh, four projects, entrepreneur projects in various domain. We had a project in design and fashion from students. We had a group of students who proposed some solutions. We have a school transportation um, project uh, proposed by, by one young entrepreneur who was really starting his project. We had another uh, sustainable career service uh, with, I would say, a more experienced uh, entrepreneur. And we had a fab lab, um, which was an association that we tried to move to uh, an entrepreneurial uh, area. So um, we are still now running this project and following how those entrepreneurs uh, deal or had dealt with the COVID crisis and how this crisis had affected their business and also how we can still with collaboration with LIDEC but also with some other private companies who were interested with the whole cycle how can we still support those entrepreneurs to continue having more social impact in Casablanca, but also how can we duplicate all this cycle of stakeholder dialogue, uh, integrating of students, association, and external stakeholder to deal with some organizational problems raised by the private sectors and then having an answer also from whether students or any other um, actors that could bring solutions. So to summarize this experience, I would say that the added value of such a project was quite multiple. So for the private sector, which is LIDEC, uh, one of their CSR projects is now embedded into the region with the, they are proud of the Casablanca City Lab. Um, they have a clear social impact that they can document and they can explain, I would say proudly in their to their stakeholders. So it's part of their uh, CSR project. For Economia as a research center, but also as a business school, we have gay through data that we are now using to enrich academic understanding from the scientific uh, publication. I mean, we have now data to publish. Uh, we had two PhD students who followed the whole process and they are now able to start 
publishing on this issue. So this is one of the requirements, the academic requirements we have in academia is to publish, otherwise we will perish. Um, also, this program is part of the international co collaboration, as I said earlier, um, we have with the University of Tampere in Finland. So the common project is called What Works. And we have different joint publications that are scheduled. We are also inviting uh, or organizing a field trip uh, from uh, Finland to Morocco. Actually, it was scheduled for uh, next October, but due to the COVID crisis, we will postpone it to the, um, the, the year after. But we, uh, we will receive some researchers and students that are interested in this uh, particular uh, program, and we will have some exchange based on mainly on youth employment through this exchange with the private sector. And the, the last stakeholder involved in this uh, experience are entrepreneurs who were involved in the training programs. Actually, they got more options, as I said before, to strengthen the scalability of their project and its valorization. Um, they got, an, I would say, and hopefully they got an easiest market entry. So um, the success of their project will have a positive in, impact in Casablanca citizens, or at least um, to some of the uh, some of them, uh, of course. So this is mainly one of the examples, one of the projects we are raising or we are dealing with in Economia, uh, trying to make the junction between private sector academia, but also trying to have connection with some international academic collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manal, for, for this uh, valuable experience, I believe, and also how you have the success, succeeded in uh, uh, putting together entrepreneurs, uh, uh, so local uh, society, academia, and, and, and private sector. So I think it's really uh, um, a good practice that could inspire also other, other, other countries, other realities. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we we have now uh, our last speaker for today, last but not least, Noha Fati. Uh, she is expert with 20 years of uh, professional experience on marketing, management, entrepreneurship. Her continuous involvement in entrepreneurship qualified her to be selected by the ALAU to become a certified trainer in 2016, then a certified master trainer in 2017 in the Start and Improve Your Business program to help entrepreneurs to start their business. Uh, since 2014, our firm is responsible for Home Air, Permanent Secretariat for South Shores, and uh, today she's responsible for uh, the UFM labeled project Home Air for the Southern Shore. Uh, Noha, the floor is yours. Thank you to be with us. Noha? First of all, thank you, Sylvia, for inviting uh, Omer to join this uh, panel discussion and to be part of the roundtable. And we definitely appreciate UNIMED as a uh, distinguished member of the consortium of Omer. Uh, thank you all for your participation and your, uh, your uh, presentation today. It was very insightful. But allow me to say I do belong to the other side of the shore, which is the private sector. I'm not into the academia. So my experience will spot on what we have learned or what we have faced from uh, dealing or uh, asking for cooperation with the universities. I will spot on different uh, um, uh, trials and experiences that I have witnessed myself. One of them was relevant to one of the universities, private universities in Egypt. When we start collaborating and hiring from them, after three times of uh, rounds of hiring, we have received an invitation to join their advisory board where they have to conduct like a uh, curriculum or courses reviewing. This was very amazing for me to see a distinguished university, it's very old one, one it has been established since 1920, asking for the involvement of the private sector. And while joining there, we have seen an advisory board from top notch uh, figures from the multinational companies uh, joining the advisory board. Their point of view, they say, we have to adapt and anticipate the market needs, not wait till we understand there is a gap. So based on the, quali the, the candidates you have heard from our universities, please provide your insights on two aspects. 
the first aspect was relevant for the technical content, the substance, the courses of the, the academia side. And the second was relevant to the soft skills of their students. What areas we should be enhancing? Those that the content was relevant to the engineering side, mainly uh, electronics and communications, still they have asked to start on the soft skill, believing this would help uh, one candidate to be qualified for the job and another one not to be qualified. And this is, was one of the most important experiences we have because we have contributed a lot in suggesting amendments or let's say in reaching in the content since we were more uh, concerned by the electronics and communications in engineering. This is what the first uh, uh, trial or uh, example I have witnessed. The second one was relevant to a government initiative. Uh, since 2014 or 2012, I cannot recall the date exactly, they have launched a new job in all private and uh, public universities, which is TICOC. It's a technology innovation commercialization uh, officer. The concept is to help the uh, papers already developed by the different teaching staff to be commercialized, to be sold. And this is, is to be sold how? By conducting uh, like market research mapping to understand the needs and the gap in the industry sector. Though this was found like a very good trial, still it was not the right approach. The right approach should be starting from searching the needs of the industry and then reverting back by suggestions to be like papers to be suggested for, uh, uh, for, experience, for making the, the required development than to be sold. Because if you have prepared the paper or you prepared your research without making sure that there is a viable market for it, it may end to be like a nice paper for a promotion, but not paper to be sold to get the benefit on. And this is what the second, uh, the second trial. Uh, the third trial is relevant to another university in Egypt. It's called Nile University. Their objective that they are built to serve the industry, which is different. They have the research center for which they have grouped all different uh, industry sectors they can serve, and they ask them to join their, um, their uh, advi not advisory board, they call it the industrial collaborator program, where they can share their needs frequently. And today I have seen that they have served a uh, number of uh, multinational companies operating in Egypt that uh, help them to uh, solve local uh, issues relevant to their business, besides helping potential entrepreneurs to start. As overall experience, I can believe that I have seen uh, three experiences are good, but I believe still can be done uh, if we have one day inside the university, what we call public, private, or private sector representative uh, or liaison officer inside the university. Simply, we need to understand what are the business uh, requirements today. I can recall one of the speakers, and I'm sorry if I cannot recall who exactly who said it, that maybe today with the COVID we'll face more unemployment. 100% correct. But in close cooperation with the, uh, the private sector, we may come up by more creative ideas to have and generate small startups that they can fill the gaps. Because normally when we refer to cut down or uh, decrease our cost, we refer to the outsourcing. Best outsourcing will be using or counting on teams that are really eligible to make the job for them. If we can create the collaboration between the university to, create, to design, implement, and monitor a, a, a startup program that can help creating new startups, serving those industries and companies, it will help to avoid the question of the unemployment or even delay delays of employees can join this program to start creating their startups. Besides, um, I have to highlight one point because I have worked a lot in the entrepreneurship. I really appreciate the different initiatives in the different universities to have a, an entrepreneurship center. But uh, it would be great if you can anticipate this phase by another step, which is uh, interns for entrepreneurs. It's like a program where the interns, before uh, the, the students before graduation and moving for a startup to start joining as an intern inside a startup. They need to understand what type of uh, complexity, challenges, obstacles. Life is not easy. I started as an entrepreneur and uh, I understand very well how far it's difficult. It's difficult independently from each country. I have crossed mentoring in Europe, in Africa, uh, lots, of, lots of entrepreneurs and startups. And I can tell it's very tough to start as entrepreneurs. So 
to start by give them the chance for a simulation while they are joining as uh, interns for entrepreneur for three months before their graduation. This will help them to understand what is their mission and what problem they will be facing instead of asking them go and build your company. What I'm saying now as a proposal, as a suggestion, do that I'm convinced by, but still is not applied in my country, but I'm sharing in case this might be flexible in another country to be shared. So this is as overall my three experiences that I have seen inside Egypt about the, uh, how to link between the entrepreneurship and the, the, the uh, sorry, to link between the academy and the universities. And definitely I know this is, the, the, the last component is common between all universities is to the design and the whole yearly uh, job fair. Before the graduation of the, uh, the, the, the students, they make like matchmaking by having a large exhibition inviting the involved or the concerned companies to come and exhibit at this event and students pass by and distribute their CV. Thank you for your time and I apologize if my word was a little bit long. Thank you so much, not at all. You are perfect on time, Noha. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing also your experience from, from Egypt. So we had this overview around the Southern Mediterranean countries and I think it was very interesting to hear from you. Uh, we have now um, 10 minutes more or less before the conclusion. So I, if there are any questions from the participants or otherwise I also, if the speakers have questions to, uh, to change among among us they are they are more than welcome Giuseppe you raise your hand please thank you um, uh, as I said at the beginning I was here because I want also to listen to what you had to teach me and uh, I, especially the second panel it was very much practical with uh, good experience coming so I wanted to, to give you a general a general question uh, in your experience do you have a general advice or you want to raise an issue on a blockage on a bottleneck when you want to push universities and research centers and the private sector to work a bit together how, how, how to close the gap do you have a, an, an experience and advice you want to give us uh, if you allow me to say I, I would go for the following is to invite the, uh, pro, uh, the teaching staff to spend the, like a week inside the uh, corporate. They need to, to witness the real life, the real professional life. Sometimes I, I got this as an insight once of one of the professors, he said, what type of challenges do you face per day? I know that uh, the life with the professor is very pressing and very pressuring, but same applies for me in business because I have a commitment. Every time I'm, I'm stepping into my office, turning on the light, there is a counting down for money getting out of the company. This is a cash flow issue that they have to take into consideration while I'm planning. So inviting the professor to spend like a week, uh, if possible to extend more inside the, the business, the, the, the company or the corporate life, this would help to understand more about the challenges and to consider more what solution could come up by. And I believe this is, will be like more creative. And this is, is not only my, my, my suggestion, it, I have seen this in one of the R&D labs for Procter & Gamble. They ask for their research staff to get out of their labs, spend the whole day or spend the whole week with the uh, selected uh, profile customer, asking them what are their issues and witness and write down what they have seen as problem and, and, and opportunities. This helped a lot to have a new type of product GAM, uh, product CB, sorry, to be launched in the market, which is really designed to help and support the, 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 their end customer. So I believe this simulation or the exchanging the, the experience would be great and help them to get better understanding. Thank you, thank you, Noha. Uh, is there any other one from among the speakers who would like to, to add something? Yeah. Um, yeah, thank Please, you. Yeah. Um, I totally agree with Noha's uh, suggestion in terms of exchange. Um, there is actually a need for professors to go and discover the, the organizational life. Let me just say that this proposition should be in the both sides also. And there is also a huge need for, for practitioners to come and see what is happening in teaching and, with, and in the research center and what is the mindset, the issues and the way of working of the researchers and how can we uh, fill in the gap between uh, this 
uh, to, um, uh, I would say, to act type of actors. So um, a kind of, I would also invite those uh, managers to come and uh, take place, be involved in the research discussions, uh, in the teaching uh, discussions area, because then they can learn and also bring their insights. Thank you, Manal. Uh, Ms. Aravella Zaccario. Thank you, Silvia. Um, from my point of view and uh, with my experience with some similar projects in Cyprus, I think the, prop the issue is more complicated. And it's not just how to bring the two actors together, but has to do with how you reconstruct whole of education. Because in order to have education, to be in conjunction and in uh, uh, partnerships with private actors in order to um, um, move up the uh, innovation and partnership, I think that higher education also must go down to the lower levels of education. It's not enough to educate people in higher education and bring them in the trades or the business but we have to enter, enter, especially with people, to this process for an early age. And you have to give them the competences, the needed competences to understand the importance of doing something or create a creative idea and how this creative or innovative idea is uh, uh, becoming at the end something that is novel and can have an impact on society. For example, um, please allow me just one minute to show. In Cyprus, through a parallel a project, the Genesis project, it was a pro it's a project that is funded by the Norwegian Financial Agreement and is uh, about youth unemployment in small islands. What it was very critical to this project, it was to identify the needed competences for young people from lower levels of education that are necessary to um, be actively involved through um, internships uh, or apprenticeships in various professions that are related with the green and sustainable jobs. Um, just, this is a small guide that now has been included to the lower levels of education in order to uh, educate and make young people to see other orientations that they have in professions. Uh, I'm saying this because I think that the problem with jobs is not only a problem in Cyprus or in the Mediterranean region, but it's a global issue. And we have to find the ways to see how all these stakeholders, they can identify all these critical elements which one of them is competences and not skills and put them into praxis. To do them means that we have to elaborate a, um, a wide regional plan or national, uh, national plan that will allow to the, uh, all the interested parties and actors to understand why we have to move to new these schemes of partnerships. Thank you. Thank you, Zakaria, for this last intervention. I believe we have uh, we have no time for the conclusion. So, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the speakers for this uh, second panel. It was very interesting and also very positive, with many messages of hope and how we can uh, really uh, work together uh, for uh, for the benefits of our society. I would say not all youth and students, but but for our society. So thank you very much. I will give now the the floor uh, to Itaf Ben Abdallah, the senior advisor for higher education and research from Union for Mediterranean. Thank you so much, Itaf. Thank you, thank you. Uh, dear Mr. Marcelo Scalisi, dear panelists, uh, dear participants, I thank each and every one of you for being present at this uh, event in this period that profoundly changed our working uh, methods. I thank uh, UNIMED for the hard work provided 
uh, in order to prepare this uh, meeting and this series of uh, webinars, as well as for having continued the programs of uh, activities despite this uh, crisis. Uh, I will share with you some uh, some uh, some ideas uh, after what uh, uh, important things that uh, you have said. Uh, for us, it's important to, to highlight that our discussion today will help uh, us to be aware of uh, new and existing tools to maximize information sharing between actors to deal with the challenge of uh, employability. Uh, also at the UFM, we believe that universities and research are key to dealing with the challenges that the Mediterranean countries is coping with, especially uh, in southern Mediterranean Today, international organizations as UFM and other organizations also, universities, research centers, uh, private sectors, and online platforms have to discuss, share, and create new partnerships in Mediterranean with a special focus on promoting entrepreneurship and digital innovation. It's a key moment for advancing regional solution to our common challenges. And I believe that this health crisis has made it more visible than ever that we can only prosper collectively on the basis of common regional uh, goods. Uh, dear participants, long before COVID-19 uh, ravaged uh, the earth, there had early, uh, already all these difficulties. These difficulties, these difficulties are not new for us, but the difference is that the pandemic revealed and reinforced the existing crisis and make all of us more aware of the need to make more efforts to find the appropriate measures to respond to employability of young people challenge. In the recovery phase, our region will need to fully exploit the potential of research and innovation and uh, drivers of economic development with all of our partners. For us at UFM, more than any time before, we are working with all of you, uh, with all of our stakeholders in order to, uh, to, uh, to share uh, our, um, our knowledge for, for, the, for better future for, the, uh, uh, for our young uh, people. And uh, finally, thank you again, and hope to see you physically uh, soon. Thank you. Thank you, Itaf. Thank you again, everyone, speakers and participants. Uh, we we really we are really glad to be all, all together, and I wish you a good continuation of the day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. See you, see you soon. Hopefully. Thank you. Bye. 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 Take care of yourselves. You too.